Hello everybody, this is Slade. Today I'm going to be walking through um, basically a basic outline of the Guard Viewer mobile app for your Uniview cameras. Um, I'm going to be showing it on an Android phone, but that won't make a difference. The layout is pretty much the exact same. So go ahead, um, I'm sure you have the app downloaded. Um, if not, I will provide a link in the description. Uh, if you are setting it up for the first time, go ahead and find the video on our channel for setting up your app initially, getting signed in, making sure your device is on there. So when you open it up, um, depending on how you've set it up so far, you're going to come to the live view screen. Uh, you probably won't see a whole lot going on. The first step is going to be coming up here to these three lines. These three lines are going to open up this menu screen. Okay, so these three lines open up the menu. The menu here, uh, it shows different tabs that you can access um, in order to do different things uh, with your cameras. At the top here, it should have your username displayed up here. If it says log in, go ahead and find the uh, separate video for setting up your app and make sure you are logged in. Everything we show here, you will have had to have been logged in and had us share the device with you already. So, I'm going to... Um, start down here at the devices tab and you should see um, all your devices here most people are probably just gonna have one um, and this shows that your account is connected to this device and we can access this device to do uh, different things across the board if you don't have any devices here, um, you'll need to contact me, talk to the technician, things to help you initially get set up the first time. So there are two ways to um, begin this process. You can either start at the devices tab and click these three dots here. And it's going to open up some options for us. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hit Start Live View. And what that does is it just pops up the live view of our cameras here that we want to see. Um, the other way we can do this, I'm going to go down here and click this Close All button. And that's just going to close all the cameras I had opened on the live view screen. Now, uh, we can also start where we started when we opened the app up on this live view screen. And you can come up here to this uh, little video camera icon with the plus. And when you hit that, it's going to show your uh, device up here. You can either click this dot onto the right side of the device. What that's going to do is that's just going to tell you tell it that you want all of the cameras that are connected to that device to show up in your live view. Um, let's just say for some reason you only wanted to see one or two cameras. You can click this arrow off here to the left and then you can come down here to the camera that you want to see mainly and you can click that box off to the left and now you're only going to see that one camera. If you come down here to start live view, now we only see that one camera because we selected that one camera. If you wanted to see all of them, you could um, click that button off to the right and all of these, uh, all of the cameras would appear here. Initially, uh, the first thing most people probably want to know is this option down here in the toolbar. This option down here uh, just tells the app the layout that you want to view the cameras in. 
So right now it's on six, and as you can see up here, we have six openings where cameras could be. If we came down here and we uh, tap this, you then see that we have an option for just one, four, six, nine, twelve, or sixteen. So right now I just have one camera open, so we're going to look at the one camera layout. And there you go. Now it will only display one camera instead of showing six spots where cameras could be or showing six cameras. Now if you had, let's say, 12 cameras displaying on the last screen and you clicked this, put it down to one, it only shows one camera, well, you know, how am I going to see my other cameras? Well, if you take your finger and you swipe to the right, you, oh, whoops, sorry. Oh, it's not going to move on mine because I only have this one camera open. But if you swipe to the right, it will move between cameras. And then if you've, let, you know, let's say you've moved three right, you can swipe left and it will move back cameras as well. So you can switch between um, cameras even if you're in this one layout. And the same rule applies to if we had even, let's say you have 32 cameras and I can only display 16 here. Well, where are the rest of my cameras? Well, even on this screen here, if you have 32 cameras hooked up, you can then swipe across like this and it will display a new screen of 16 of the other 16 cameras on your system. And then you can swipe back and forth on the screen to go between all of your cameras. So to make it seem a little less overwhelming, I'm just going to choose the four for right now. And you can just see four windows here. An important thing to note is you may think when you pull up your cameras and you see them in these little boxes, oh, they look a little blurrier than I may have expected. Well, what's happening is the app is setting the quality to the video you're seeing to a lower quality, A, um, just for the fluidity of the video and the ability to access a bunch of cameras at one time. They automatically set the quality to low to save you on mobile data or um, like I said, for performance issues, that way it'll seem more smooth, um, it'll just operate a little more cleanly. Uh, let's say you have a really, really good internet connection and a really powerful phone, and you do want to raise the quality of the cameras in these boxes. What you can do is you can tap once on a camera, and it will select it if you just click between these boxes you can select the different cameras. When I select this box I can go down here to this toolbar again and I'll look here and it says quality low. Well if I tap that I then can adjust the quality that I'm looking at. So we'll move from low to what you see right now to a medium. And as you can see it got a little bit crisper, a um, little more detailed. Then I can go here, and then now it says SD, that just means standard quality. Then we can go up here and we can go to the high setting, which will be full HD. And now as you can see, it's much crisper and much more detailed than the low version. But it's also taking a lot more internet in order to show us that image. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this on high for now. Um, let's say you have a bunch of these cameras up and this is, you want to leave it in a four layout most of the time, but you do want to see a camera full screened, kind of see what's going on on something, you know, happening in one camera's view. If you double tap a camera, it will then full screen that one camera and you'll see this number automatically switches to a one because it's only showing you one camera. 
and then you uh, have a little more freedom to see uh, more that is happening in this camera view. Uh, if you double tap again on the image, it will then go back out of full screen and bring you back to the layout menu here with different options. Now uh, we're going to be working with this camera, so I'm going to double click this and full screen it again. And we'll go down here and look at the other options on our toolbar. Over here is audio. Um, for, I'm going to say, most of our customers, you probably are not going to have um, built in microphones unless it's a certain situation where we set it up appropriately. But uh, if you would have a microphone, if you click this option, it will then unmute and you will be able to hear the um, live audio that the camera is recording. If you don't have a microphone and you click this, you're not going to hear anything. So I'm going to go ahead, as you can see, we don't hear anything coming through that. So I'm just going to click uh, that right there and the audio will go away. Now these other two options over here. We have snapshot with the camera and record with the video camera. Looking at this, let's say um, as I was checking this camera I saw a really adorable dog come up into view and I just had to get a picture of this dog because it was just so adorable. I could come over here and I could tap this snapshot button and it then, as you can see there, snapshot saves successfully. It then saves a snapshot of the image that I was looking at. And that snapshot will just be one picture of this um, live video that we're viewing. Now let's say the dog came up and another dog came up and they were playing and they were having just the cutest little play session uh, of adorable puppies. And I wanted to record video of what I was looking at right now. What I could do is I could hit this record button with the camera and as you can see it says start recording and up here you'll see this little red dot and that tells us that right now it is re recording what we are viewing live on the screen. Now the puppies have left, they're done playing, I'm ready to end my video I can come down here and tap record again and you'll see that the recording was saved and that little red dot disappears letting us know that it is no longer recording. Um, also down here you have image settings. What this is going to do is it's going to um, adjust the image of your camera if you find that the lighting environment um, washes out colors, um, doesn't make things seem as vibrant, um, you can adjust image settings here. I would recommend um, if you are not frequently used to um, technology or um, adjusting and messing with options uh, in in technology, I would just leave it alone. Um, the image you're going to get out of the box that we set up for you is already going to be really, really good. Um, there's only going to be a couple instances where you would really need to adjust the image. Um, but so I would just leave that alone for now. I wouldn't worry about that. Remote configuration, you can go in and change a bunch of options. Um, again, if you're going to be um, changing a bunch of options, I would recommend you contact us uh, and let us work with you because things can get really confusing really fast. You can lose connection um, permanently until you get things ironed out. There's just a lot that could be affected. So 
if you're going to branch into really detailed options, go ahead and give us a call and email, uh, and we'll help you out with that. Um, there are some other things down here. Um, alarm. Let me move this window up a little bit for you. The alarm. I'm going to have to create a whole separate video um, for the alarm options because there's just there's going to be a lot to it. So keep an eye out for um, a new video for the alarms. Um, PTZ. This would be to control a pan tilt zoom camera. It is a special type of camera that's motorized. If we had one of those up here, we would be able to click this option and it's essentially going to let us move the camera around uh, live and just kind of point the lens in different directions to see different stuff. Two-way audio, um, these are going to be also very specific cameras that have mics and speakers um, and you could communicate back and forth with someone. Favorites, that is its own um, tab in the menu here. So I'm going to hold off talking about that until I get over to the favorites tab. And then close all, like I stated before, that is just going to close all the cameras that we were viewing, the device we had open, anything like that. So in our menu here, as you can see, we've been in devices, we've been in live view. Now we're going to take a look at playback. Now, what I will say for playback, um, you can view playback on your phone. Um, I'm gonna, there's going to be another video on our channel going over playback, um, either on your PC for the software. Um, I would recommend doing it that way just because I think it's a little bit easier, um, a little less time consuming. You can view it on a bigger screen, um, all that good stuff. But uh, we'll be heading to the playback section here in just a moment. I did forget one thing here. I'm going to start this live view of this camera again. I forgot to tell you, so obviously right here I said is full screen. Well, obviously, obviously if you look at your phone, that is not truly full screen. It's just a square image. Well, if you take your phone and you tilt it to the side and uh, put it in landscape mode, like you're going to view a video, you'll see that it actually does full screen clear across your camera screen. And it, um, oh, you can see that it actually full screens all around and you can see the full image. Uh, on this screen, if you were to use, it's hard to show with a mouse, but if you take your fingers and you put them together, touch them on the screen, and widen them out to zoom in, you'll actually see that we can zoom in. And we can just move the image around by moving our finger around. And we can check out different stuff. Um, this is going to be a digital zoom, so the more you zoom in, the more blurry the image is going to start getting. But you can zoom in there and move around. You'll notice when you touch the screen, some options appear. Well, don't uh, get, don't fret, don't worry. Um, all of these options I've already explained. If you paid attention to the icons, they're all the same options here. Alarms we'll go over in another video. You have the different layout option. You can close all your cameras. Favorites tab I'll go over in a minute. Um, playback tab I'll go over in a minute. We got the camera over here. That'll take a screenshot or a snapshot of your screen that you see. You have the uh, whoops, sorry. You have the video camera that will record a video clip of what you are seeing live. You have the image quality settings. Uh, so if I put it into low. You'll see that it gets real blurry, but it's taking up a whole bunch of less internet. Um, whoops, sorry. And then if I click this again, I'll put it back up to high. 
And you'll see the image quality is much, much better, but it's taking a bunch more internet. And then uh, audio if you have microphone and PTZ control if you had a PTZ uh, camera. So all well and good. Um, we're going to flip this back up for a moment here. And then you can either hit this playback tab right here and it will take you to the playback tab. Or we're going to flip it sideways again. You can hit this here and it will take you to playback. Now what will happen if you do playback from here? It's going to automatically put you into playback for the camera you were viewing and for the date you were viewing it on. Um, that's just a quick, if you need to look back an hour, you can do it that way. Um, in this, if you see down here at the bottom, you have a timeline. And this timeline shows the date that you're looking at and the time that you are viewing. Um, these colors here, depending on how your cameras are set up, these colors um, show uh, different events. So the blue that you will see is just normal video, and then the red that you see is when the camera saw motion, and it knew that motion was detected, so it shows us these areas. Over here, the magnifying glass, you can uh, go to the date you would like to see. So when we look at this calendar, every number, every day here, with a blue dot underneath it, are the days that we have recording available. So uh, looking at this, I can go back to the previous month by coming up here and clicking this arrow. And you can see we go back to the 24th. So I'm going to go here to the 25th. And over here to the right side is going to be the time that you would like to see. Uh, this is going to be military time. So let's say that my incident happened at 1250 on the 25th of June. And I can hit OK. And it will go in and search. And it will then find the video from that point in time. And you can see the events down here. Um, alarm. Again, I'm going to go over that in a separate video. Over here is the pause. You can click pause to pause the video playback if you need to focus on an image, um, anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and play it. You have the speed of the video. You can play it in half speed, a quarter speed, double speed. Whoops, come on. Uh, all the way up to four times speed. Now remember when you speed up video, uh, your internet has to work much harder and the recorder has to play work much harder so it, if it is a little stuttery on your phone I'm sorry that's unfortunately kind of the lay of the land in technology world um, if you play it on your computer you may have much better results um, but I'm just gonna put it back to normal speed you can see here it was on low quality there, uh, even though it said high, it did seem about the same resolution as it is now. Let me hit this again. There we go. So that's actually the high quality image, as you can see the difference. Um, I think the app was just confused, and since I had it on high before, when it views playback, again, it's going to put it automatically in the low setting. Um, but if you come over here and I clicked it, put it back to low, put it back to high here to kind of trick the little brain, 
uh, and then it put it back to the high image here. Now down here on this timeline that appears, if I drag this timeline, you can see the time is moving there. So I'm just going to speed it up a little bit. I'm going to set it there. And it'll probably take a second for the camera to catch up here to us. There we go. So now you can see the time changed. Like I said, the recorder's working overtime. Uh, the phone, internet, everything's working overtime. So just kind of be patient with it. Ooh, did you see that flash of lightning? Uh, just kind of be patient with it, and uh, it, it, it'll do what you want. You just kind of have to let the, mach the machines do their work. Um, again, very similar options that we see here. Um, saving video from playback on your phone. This is um, this may seem a little confusing. You may think that this this icon over here is what you want. It is not what you want. This is a sort of a complicated um, way to set up a split where you can view like four different playbacks sort of at once across four different cameras. Um, I just wouldn't recommend using this on your phone. Um, it's difficult to use. Um, your phone really isn't set up to try to be pulling all that information. What you want to see down here and find the incident that happened and once you find the incident go to the beginning of where it starts and then I would come whoops I would tap on the screen and come over here and click your video camera and you'll see the red dot appear and then we'll just let that disappear and we'll watch the rain a little bit um, see some stuff going on very nice very cool alright the incidents done I'm gonna come over here and click that camera again and you'll see that the recording was saved so now I have a saved video of what just uh, happened here on June 25th um, at that time so it, it uh, you can view playback um, it just don't get too scared by the layout it really is pretty self-explanatory if you just kind of use it a couple times, get yourself used to how everything flows, um, it becomes really beneficial. So n before I freak you out here, I'm going to flip my phone back so you're going to see the image bloop, go back to the tall image. I'm going to move this sort of center here. All right. So now we viewed the playback screen. As you can see, if you were to come to the playback screen this direction, it's the same exact thing that I just showed you, except now we're just looking at it standing up and your options are never going to leave you. They'll just always be right here. Your timeline will be down here. You can look at the uh, date and time right there. You can change the speed you're watching it at, um, all that, all that good stuff. So same exact process that you just watched. It just is flipped and looks just slightly different. So that is the playback tab. Um, it is very beneficial. Um, you can, like, let's say the camera that I was viewing before wasn't the camera I wanted to view playback on. You can come to the playback tab, just like live view. You can select this up here. You can either select all your cameras or just select one. So I'm just gonna do uh, this one right here for that date and time. And I'm gonna start playback down here. And now I have that camera. Now again, auto puts low quality, put it up to high quality, and now I can view the video, move around, uh, record videos, save images, uh, all that good stuff. So that is the playback tab. 
Now, um, after the Playback tab, if we come down to the Picture and Video tab, this is where the pictures and images that you would have taken will be stored. Um, they'll also be saved in your um, gallery on your phone. Uh, but they'll also be easy to find in this app. Uh, if you look down here, right now I have them organized by time. And this is the time that you would have um, taken them. If I come down here, I can just do pictures, which will only show the pictures I've taken. Or I can click video, and it will only show the videos that I have saved. So let's take a look here. If I click on this, it will now play the video that I have saved in all of its glory. Um, if I wanted to delete this video, I could hit this trash can down here and delete it. If I click this folder here, it will ask if you want us to, or if you want to export the file. This is just going to move the file um, onto your phone. And you also have the option to share uh, the file. So you could upload this to like a Google Drive or a OneDrive or another cloud storage application. And you could share it with colleagues, um, whoever you need to get that information to. Oops, I apologize for that. Now, uh, if we come and click this up here, which actually, I don't need this video, so I'm going to click this trash can. I'm going to delete that file. We can do the same thing here. We can see uh, the video I had taken right here. I'm just going to delete that file. Now you'll see I have no more videos in there. Um, so that is the picture and video tab. Um, if we come down here to favorites, we can make, um, let's say you had three main cameras that uh, you knew you wanted to always see in a quick hurry. Or let's say you had multiple recorders and you wanted to be able to access, you know, one camera off of these four, one camera each off of these four recorders and view them quickly without having to go into one, view the image, go into the next one, view the image. And you just want to see those four and be able to pull those up in a quick fashion. Well, that's where favorites is going to come into play. And if you if you are um, familiar with um, <laughs> like uh, Directv, um, TiVo back in the day, um, anything like that, uh, you kind of know how favorites work. It's just kind of setting you up to get somewhere quick. So right now, uh, you will probably have none. I have made one here, but I'm going to come up to this plus tab, and I'm going to create a new one. So here you can enter the name uh, of whatever you want to name this group of cameras or this camera uh, so that it's easy for you to remember what uh, combination it is. So I'm just going to put something random. I'm going to click OK, and then it will bring up your devices here, and it will ask you which cameras you want to add to this favorite group. So I could click this dot over here, and it will add this entire recorder, but I don't really want to do that because I'm just, you can do that, but I can uh, uh, just view certain cameras and that's just what I want to see. I just want to see certain cameras and I want to access them quickly. So let's say I want this camera, that camera, um, and uh, you know this camera here. And then I can come up here to this little floppy disk symbol and that's going to save this group of favorites. So I'm going to click that. 
and you'll see added to favorites successfully. Now these favorites are stored and I can access them a few different ways. I can either come to this favorites tab and I can click on these three dots and I can click start live view and watch this. Boom. Those three cameras I put in the favorites, I automatically have them right in live view. It's just really, really nice to be able to grab those quickly. Now, let's close all of these and let's say you just open the app and you don't want to go to the favorites tab and then come back to the live view tab. You just want to view your favorites straight from the live view tab. Well, when you save your favorites, guess what? It saves them like another device. So if you come up here to your device list and click on that, boom, your favorites are saved here. And even from your favorites, you could click here and get all those cameras from your favorites. Over, uh, You can click this, you can have all of your favorites. Uh, and then if you click this over here, you can see um, which what is in this group of favorites and it will tell you what uh, the name of the camera is and as well as what device it is connected to so if I were to select that there and come down to start live view bam those three cameras straight from the live view page so that's just uh, another neat uh, function you can set up to make this a little bit faster and a little bit um, more useful for you. So I'm going to go ahead and close these cameras. Come back on up to our menu. Um, you'll see a tab on here, Alarm Notifications. Um, check out, I'm going to make a separate video for alarm uh, information because there's just there's a lot to go over and it deserves to be its own video. So keep an eye out for that. There's going to be a lot of fun stuff in there that um, depending on your system and how advanced you want to go, there's some fun stuff you can set up. Down here you'll see local config. Uh, it, that is essentially your settings. So if I go in here, you have snapshot mode. And that just says how many snapshots you take. So you could set it to five. And then every time you click to snapshot, it will take five images instead of just one. Um, your PTZ speed, if I had a camera that was point tilt zoom and I was moving it around, I, uh, moving this number down would decrease the speed it moved. Moving it up, it would increase the speed it moved. Um, device time zone, uh, basically it shows you the um, information from the recorder using the time zone information of uh, that recorder instead of just trying to use the information off of your phone. Temperature unit, um, obviously Celsius or Fahrenheit. I'm just going to flip that Fahrenheit now. Password protection, um, you can set up a password to help protect your configuration and things if um, you have little fingers that are often on your phone. Do not disturb you can set up if you have um, a lot of alarm stuff set up. Uh, I will get into that in a separate video. Um, if you are just leaving your phone on a desk and you have your viewing cameras um, and you just leave it untouched for a long period of time, this setting will pause the videos automatically so it just doesn't keep sucking your internet down and um, just using your phone and draining and draining and draining your battery. Um, you can have auto discover new devices on. Um, go ahead and just leave that on. Uh, if you, you probably, th this is just basically this is just beneficial to have for when we um, share stuff to you. It'll just kind of pop on. You don't have to do 
anything uh, special. You can auto detect device upgrade, um, anything like that to let you know when it's time to upgrade your um, firmware. Uh, you can change device Wi-Fi configuration. Um, you can forget the device password, and you can also see data usage here. So, um, you know, you can see how much data you're using using different quality settings. So, if you're using high and you're paying a lot of money to your phone company because you are using a bunch of mobile data, uh, you can check out and see if that high is using a bunch of mobile data, and then you can start using medium or low and conserve a bit. So that's the local config uh, menu, remote config here. Uh, basically, if you had um, a camera on your network, things like that, you can remote in and you can change different options and such. But basically, since we've already set it up, um, got it all connected to the recorder and got it connected to your phone you really won't uh, be using this tab so I hope that um, helps you feel a little more familiar um, with the guard station app I hope you feel a little more comfortable using it um, and I know this is a lot of information it's a lot to take in all at once but uh, feel free to come back to this video, rewatch, um, ask questions, call us, email me. Um, and if you're having some struggles, we can work through it and get you, get you all set up. But this is a very good starting point. From here, you can uh, play with it and really set it up to exactly how you want it to look and act and all of that but this just kind of gives you the idea of how to use it what's available to you and I hope you really enjoy using it um, I am super thankful for being able to help set up your app and help you learn it so thank you for all of your time today go ahead and subscribe to this channel for more helpful videos that can help you make the most out of your system which of course is pretty awesome and go ahead and like it uh, just you know <laughs> for the time and effort I put into it it would be nice you don't have to like it but that would be cool and have a wonderful morning or afternoon